Let's talk about cameras. Depth of field, camera cuts, all that stuff, how to animate cameras. Let's talk about all of that right now. So the cool part about every Blender scene is that it actually starts with a camera. Uh, if you want to make a new Blender scene, you can always just go to File, New, General, Bo bam you're in a default Blender scene, which has a camera right here, which I'm going to select right now. And if you want to view the world through the lens of this camera, again, you can press this little camera button right here, or you can press zero on your numpad to jump through the view of the world in your scene through your actual camera lens. And for this tutorial, we are going to use Blender EV as a render engine, just because it makes things a lot easier. Then we're going to press Z and switch our rendering mode to rendered, uh, which you can also do with this little menu up here uh, by pressing that left little, the rightmost little sphere, excuse me. And then there we go. We now have our scene in render view, which was gonna just let us preview the changes we're making to our cameras a lot easier. You can also add cameras to Blender by pressing Shift plus A and clicking camera right here. But again, our scene starts with a camera, so we don't really need to do that right now. So now that we're viewing our scene through our camera lens, you're gonna see this little orange square right here, or at least it is orange when your camera is actually selected, right? That is the lens in which your camera is seeing your 3D scene. And to make that even more obvious, I'm gonna click on my camera right here, go to the little camera tab that appears when you have a camera object selected in object mode in Blender, right? So make sure in object mode, you have your camera selected, then this appears. Then I'm gonna to go to viewport display, and then I'm gonna see this little passport to option, which probably just butchered the pronunciation of, I am very not French. <laughs> but if we change this option, right? So if we drag this around and move this all the way to the right, that gives you a very clear idea of what you're going to be seeing when you go to render animation in this scene. And personally, I always have this option all the way to the right because I want a very clear idea of what is and isn't in my camera's view when I'm doing animation work in Blender. So now let's talk about animating and moving our camera. So just like any other object in Blender, I can come out of this view here and I press G to move it around, press R to rotate it, and it's a little bit hard to see what we're actually doing with our camera here, right? So I'm gonna drag, oop, excuse me, I'm gonna press right click to cancel that. I'm actually gonna drag from here to create a new 3D viewport. So I'm gonna do that. Then now I'm gonna press zero. So we're seeing our camera view through the lens of our camera on this rightmost 3D viewport, right? Which is actually exactly what they do in the animation viewport, just opposite. So. I'm gonna go back to the layout view though. And now that we have this view on our rightmost 3D viewport, I'm gonna start rotating our camera right here. You're gonna see that our camera lens is moving around if we rotate it, it's moving around if we translate it as well. So very, very useful to have two views so you can get a really good idea of what's happening in your camera lens while also being free to move around however you so please in the leftmost 3D viewport, right? But there's also two other really useful ways to move our camera around in Blender. And probably the most common that you see people using is by pressing N, going to view, then clicking this little camera to view option right here under view lock. Now, you're gonna notice something. If we zoom out and frame our camera here in this leftmost viewport, then start rotating our camera in this viewport, you're gonna see that our camera actually follows our normal movement patterns in Blender. So if we zoom in and out, our camera is moving in and out. If we rotate our camera and by orbiting around our cube, our camera is also orbiting around our cube. So this just locks the movement of the camera to the movement in your 3D viewport, which is really cool. Um, very fast way of doing things. But I'll warn you now, it's really easy to forget to turn this off and you'll totally mess up a shot and it's super annoying because you maybe forget to key it or whatever. So always remember when you're done adjusting your camera here, turn this off. And there's one final way to move your camera in Blender, which is personally what I almost always use actually. And it is by, I'm gonna hide this menu by pressing N and then I'm gonna press Shift plus tilde. Now, if you do not know what tilde is, that is the button below escape on your keyboard or to the left of one on your keyboard. So that is tilde, it's above tab as well. So it's in that area on your keyboard. So if you press shift plus tilde, 
you can move your camera around, you know, so long as you are moused over a 3D viewport with an active camera, that is. Technically, I guess you can do it whenever you want with 3D viewport, but for our purposes here, just make sure this viewport is active by like clicking into it, then press shift plus tab. Now you're able to move your camera around as if it's like a first person shooter game. So if you've played, you know, Minecraft, Call of Duty, any FPS game in the world, you're gonna be really comfortable with this because you move around with WASD, you can look around just by using your mouse in first person, and you can go up and down by pressing Q to go down and E to go up. But if that's all hard to remember, there's this really useful little uh, dialogue box that pops up right at the bottom. So look right over there, <laughs> at the very bottom of Blender, right? You can see all the hotkeys associated with this mode. And I just find this mode to be the most useful and fast. Uh, and you can also use the scroll wheel in and out to change your movement speed overall. You press shift to go faster and alt to go move slower. So this is honestly what I'm almost always using in Blender. I'll just move it around like this. Then I'll press N, go to item, and just use the rotation values right here while holding shift usually, uh, just to do my fine-tuned rotation adjustments of a camera. Then I'll just press N to hide that again. Shift plus tilde, adjust my camera even more if I need to. And that's basically what I usually do uh, to move around to cameras in Blender. So that's how I personally do it. But again, say you want to animate a camera, right? Well, remember, this auto king option, if we click it on in our timeline here, then we move our camera around in either of these options. Actually, we do need one keyframe first. So we're gonna have to key our camera by making sure it's selected right there, pressing I, and then doing a location, rotation, and scale keyframe. And now our camera is keyed, of course. Uh, so we go to frame 30 here, and then we move our camera using shift plus tilde, then left click to confirm. We're gonna place a new keyframe right there and I'll set my preview range once again by pressing P and box selecting those two frames and hitting play. Now our camera's animating. So just like every other object we've animated so far, you animate cameras in Blender the exact same way. But if you've held a real camera before, you know that you can also change the zoom, right? So on this camera, you adjust this little dial here and we're zooming in and out. That is called adjusting the focal length, which is what all these little, I don't know if it's gonna be in focus, but all these little numbers you can see on this part of a camera, that is the focal length, right? And each lens a camera has, has like a certain focal length distance. Sometimes it's locked, it's fixed. Sometimes it's adjustable, like this lens that can zoom in and out like that. Um, and the same thing applies to Blender. So that is available right here when you have your object, your camera object selected in Blender. You have the focal length option right here, which is your zoom. So we were just moving our camera around, but if we actually want to zoom it in and out, we adjust this option. So if I move this around, you're going to see 10 millimeters, super fisheye, very weird looking, probably don't want to use that super often. And 150 millimeters is like real zoomed in. You're like shooting wildlife photography or something at that point. That's like extreme zoom level. So. By default, I think it's 50, right? Yeah, default is 50. And remember, if you ever wanna go back to a default value in Blender, mouse over it and press backspace on your keyboard to go to that value. There's also depth of field right here. So I'm gonna click on that right now and go to f-stop right here. So you can think of f-stop as your blur amount, basically. And depth of field is kind of just like the plane of focus that you have for your camera and Blender. And your real eye does this all the time. If you hold up your finger right in front of you, if you look right at it, you're gonna notice that everything behind your finger becomes super blurry. Uh, and that's kind of the concept behind depth of field, except it's a plane in Blender. You're moving in and out to change uh, what is and isn't in focus. So if I change my f-stop all the way to something ridiculously small like 0.1, you're gonna see our cube gets real blurry here. Um, and to make it pin sharp and in focus, we can adjust our focus distance. So if I hold left click on this, then adjust this, you're gonna see that it slowly starts to get more and more in focus until this corner right here. And I'm just zooming in and out with shift here and holding middle mouse and shift to move around this little area inside of our camera. So middle mouse to zoom, holding shift and middle click to 
kind of pan around this view. And I'm gonna zoom in right here. And as you can see, this part is razor sharp in focus, but everything behind it is super blurry because we have such a ridiculously low f-stop number, which I'll increase a little bit just to show you that if I increase this, basically everything's in focus, but decrease this, only this little corner of the cube is in focus, right? There's also this blades option right here, which kind of gives you a bokeh depth of field effect. It is extremely subtle in this case, uh, and it's usually pretty subtle in Blender. It's not the most obvious thing in the world, but I usually have this turned up because it can be a nice little addition to your depth of field in the scene, especially if I have a bunch of like bright lights behind you or something's pretty overexposed, it can look really nice. And we can also animate all of these effects by mousing over them and pressing I. So of course that's gonna animate on our currently active key, um, which is, or excuse me, currently active frame, which is frame 25 in our case here. But I'm gonna go back to frame one, then I'm gonna mouse over this focal length value and press I. Now that is a keyed value, and I'm gonna to go to frame 30, then drag this up, which will automatically place a new keyframe, but only because we have auto key right here enabled. So I'm gonna zoom out here, go back to frame one, hit play, and look at this. We have a really cool little camera zoom animation as if we're like rotating around this cube and like zooming in like that. Pretty cool stuff. And we could also animate the focus distance here. We could animate the f-stop, so say, we wanted this to start out really blurry. We could animate this and this value on frame one and 30 and drag this way, way in the distance and hit play. Kind of gets pin razor sharp at the end there as if we're adjusting our focal distance on a camera in real time, which is really cool. And we can also go to the graph editor here to adjust all these values individually. So we have all of our transforms right here for the camera object. So we have all of our transforms for our camera here. And right here, we have all these values we just adjusted in the actual like object properties of our camera. So that's going to be things like the focal length, focal distance, you know, the blur amount, the depth of field, all that kind of stuff. That's going to be under here. The actual rotation, location, and scale is going to be under here on our camera in the graph editor. And lastly, I wanna briefly talk about how to do camera cuts in Blender. But before we talk about camera cuts in Blender, let's talk about how real camera cuts are done, right? This is gonna sound really obvious when I say this out loud, but if you have a scene with actors in it or objects or whatever, and you need to cut from one point to another, generally, the way that's done in the real world is you'll have multiple cameras. So if I'm photographing someone like right here and I have a camera overhead here but I want to cut in the very next shot to a lower angle as she's turning for example I would ideally do that with two different cameras rather than trying to quickly move this camera around in order to get that coverage that we need for that angle right and the same thing is with, true with blender where you don't really want to have a camera cut that is done purely in animation. So if I turn off my preview range, go to frame 31 and move my camera around here like that. Let's play this back, see what happens. That looks fine. That is technically a camera cut that would work, but this introduces numerous problems that you might not really think about at first. And I certainly didn't think about at first until you start getting into rendering or any other parts of the pipeline where you're editing camera animation data because really this is gonna create issues with motion blur if you render this, because as far as Blender is concerned, this isn't a cut. You are moving your camera extremely quickly from one point to another. So Blender is gonna render this frame with a ton of motion blur and it's gonna look terrible. So that's one problem with camera cuts, right? But the other problem with camera cuts in Blender is that if you wanna adjust this animation data, you're gonna to have to always be worrying about this keyframe because you have to always keep it at the same place. You can't like extend the timing of this to be a little bit longer because then it's just gonna be transitioning into this keyframe instead. So there's a solution to this and that's just using multiple cameras. Um, and a way to set up multiple cuts in Blender is by using the marker system we briefly touched on. So I'm gonna undo that right here and delete this keyframe. And I'm gonna go to frame one, which is where we want our first cut and set our default camera to our first cut by clicking on it, then going to marker, then bind camera to markers. Then 
where I want my cut, which is frame 31. I'm gonna select this camera, then go to marker, bind camera to markers, then I'm gonna adjust the position of this camera to be uh, right here, we'll say. And I'll delete all the keyframes before this to show you that this is not using this previous animation data. This is a completely different camera on a completely different cut. And I'll move over here and make it move to the right a little bit. Now, if I play this back, it's gonna start with this camera and cut to this camera on frame 31. So if I play this back, go from the first camera to the second camera. So there's no animation data beyond this point on this camera, but we still say movement here because we're cutting to this camera in the 3D viewport, which is really awesome and how I would recommend everybody do camera cuts in Blender. But that about covers it. In the next videos, we're gonna talk about lighting and we're really close to being done with this series. So congratulations if you've gotten this far. Check out the Patreon if you haven't, get access, access to our exclusive Discord community and I'll see you soon. Congratulations on finishing this tutorial. It might feel like a small step, but you're now one step closer to animation mastery. And if you want access to an exclusive Discord community, exclusive rewards, and help ensure that I can keep making tutorials for you just like this one, check out my Patreon. Link is in the description below.